Hi, I'm Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom, and today I'm going to show you how I use Microsoft Excel to help me create curriculum maps I use in my classroom. So the first thing I do is I just open a blank Excel template, and I begin work by numbering the weeks. This is clearly optional for you, but it's something sometimes I like to refer to as week 7 or week 9, and it helps me transfer everything over each year. So um, I begin by just putting the title. I always like to use row 1 as the heading for each column. So I will just start numbering a couple. And then, um, I super love this feature, I will highlight them, drag the corner down, and um, have it auto number for me. And next I go through and I put the dates. Now I like to make this cell a little bit larger because I like to identify on here which, um, if there's anything special about that week. So if it's say a four-day week because of Labor Day or if it's a three-day week because of Thanksgiving, I like to identify that on here. So to do that, um, I like to do it with a side-by-side -side with um, having the calendar up. That's just what makes sense to me. So I will begin to do that. So my first week of school is August 17th this week, this year, but there's no point in putting that because it's only three days and we don't begin any curriculum. So I will begin with August 24th, August 31st, and then September 7th, and I will mark that it's four days. Now, it's your choice if you want to begin with the Monday of the week, the Sunday of the week, however it works best for you. So I'm just going to keep working on this. Okay, I finished setting this up with each of the weeks of my year. You can see I didn't go far down enough, so I will pull that down as well. Um, next, I am um, going to move this over a little bit. I like to leave the next column for notes. So the most common thing I put in here is our state testing date. So our state testing dates um, begin this week. So I will add those in. And again, this is just a way for me to know when I'm planning what might impact my instruction during those days so I keep that in mind as I'm working. So as you saw in the post, um, the next thing I do is generally break things into chunks or units to teach. And this is where I really like Excel for this feature. So the first four weeks for me are going to be spent on rounding, other place value skills, and then addition and subtraction. So I've already identified that that's going to take me four weeks. So I'm going to take these four cells in this column. I'm going to highlight them. Then I'm going to right click. And I realize this is a little bit different for you if you have a Mac. I'm going to click format cells. And my computer is being slow. Sorry about that. The pop-up box, box will come up and it will let me customize what these cells look like if it ever comes up. There we go. So um, I can go to custom and change it to text if there's a problem. But what I really like to use these for is to center the horizontal and the vertical so the words are straight in the middle to wrap the text so that it fills the entire cell instead of only going horizontally, and then merging the cells so this shows as an entire unit. So once I click that, you can see this has created one large cell. So I like to show that by giving it a thick outside border and then just filling it one color. I'm going to go with a light one. And now I can type in here. Now this I generally, I make the text smaller. Now if you want to come to the next line, um, the line behind it, you can, in this one you can um, just continue typing and because it's merged it will already go down 
as you see here. But um, maybe something would automatically fit on that line, but you want it to go to the next line instead. You can force that by getting to the end of it and clicking Alt Enter. And you see, you no longer see what's there and everything moved up. Um, and it automatically let me go down. So that is one unit. My next unit is going to be multiplication and division. And I'm going to do that for six weeks. So I'm going to take those. I'm going to format the cells again. I'm center them both vertically and horizontally. Merge the cells. Now I'm going to show you what would happen if I didn't wrap the text. Change the color again. Okay. If I just put multiplication, you see it gets cut off because the text isn't wrapped. So um, well, we're going to make the text smaller, but it still is cut off. If I um, format the cell to wrap the text, it will go ahead and um, move it down to the bottom line. Now, of course, we don't want multiplication broken up like that, and so I'm going to make this column just a little bit larger because it needs to be anyway. And you see that it moved, it, did, it kept adding on that top line because I didn't force it into the bottom. If I just click Enter, it gets me out of that cell. So if I go there and do Alt-Enter, it puts it on a new column. Oops, I did it in the wrong spot. Let's try that again. There we go. So multiplication, and again, I'm going to alt enter and do division. Now, another way you may choose to do this here is if you right click and go into format cells, you can change and have your text go vertically really simply by just giving it 90 degrees. So if you would rather have it face this way instead of going out, that's certainly an option as well. And generally when you do this, you can have your text a little bit larger. That's totally just a personal choice. So I'm going to continue breaking this down into units. Okay, I finished setting up my column with my units. Now, if you notice when I got down here, I stopped changing the text size. Um, because I was feeling lazy. So a shortcut is to select the column and I can change the text size to all be the same. I want to make this one a little bit larger so I'm going to select 11. So now this column is done. Now I have chosen not to put anything in April and May. For me the reason is we begin our state testing in March. So we have already covered all of our standards before the state testing begins. Um, unfortunately, we have it pretty early in the year. We will revisit multiplication and division and go more in depth with it later in the year. And I save this time for reviewing content, um, continuing to work with students, and then building for next year. Our textbook often includes skills that aren't our standards, that are beyond our standards, in preparation for next year. So this time is good for that. Also, I know things change, and I'm going to end up probably pushing this back a week or two. So I've only mapped out this far for now. So now that I have an idea, now I like to plug in my standards. Having my standards right here really helps me decide what I do week by week. So I'm going to make this larger. And again, I'm going to merge the cells so that I can just um, write right in there and it fits the whole unit. I'm going to again outline it. Now, I know I'm going to need my text to be quite small in order to fit here. So I'm going to go ahead and put 8, and then I'm going to pull up my standards and begin. Now, I've already looked and have a good idea of what I'm including where, because that was the first step in my process. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add it here. Now, um, I could choose to copy and paste but I find it easier just to do it myself by hand. So I'm going to just type these in. And then um, this time, I'm only going to use two of the three standards that are here. Again, I finished this, so I'm going to Alt-Enter. 
and put the second one in. And um, it went ahead and made sure it fits in the box. Now, it may not fit in the box and it might cut it off. And if that were the case, then I could just um, click the cell and see what is highlighted and then drag the cell down a little bit. Um, it did cut it off and it will continue to increase. Now, it's just doing those that one row. So if I undo that, and I select all of those rows and move it just a little bit, it will increase the height of all of those rows. So it evens it out a little bit, which I prefer it to be evened out for all of these weeks in the columns to appear the same. So that's the way I prefer to do that. So now once I have the standards listed, now I'm ready to break it down into um, what I'm going to teach each week. I um, prefer to lay it out for each week so I know what I'm going to be doing every week that I'm teaching. So I'm going to choose to begin with rounding. And I like to just put basic um, skills here. I don't, I don't get very specific because I've been teaching this grade for a while now and I, I kind of know what my shorthand means. So I'm just going to put rounding here. Um, um, I'm also going to put place value because even though place value is not a standard in third grade, um, students need to use place value in order to round and they need to have that good strong place value understanding. So I'm including that even though it's not a standard because I know I'm going to teach it at the same time. So I'm going to hopefully accomplish both of those that week and then I'm going to enter into the next week. Now I know I'm going to also teach place value here but I'm going to begin addition and talk about addition with and without. So again, this is shorthand that makes sense to me. Um, I'm going to again change the size to be a little bit smaller. Um, this lets me know this is what I'm going to be working on this week. And I'm going to review addition and then do subtraction both with and without regrouping. This last week, um, as you saw in my post, uh, I always leave the last week for a review week. It gives us an opportunity to look back at everything we've done, and it also gives me a little bit of buffer in case we need some additional time. So when I just look at this map, I can quickly see this is the week I'm teaching. These are the standards I'm reaching to and this is how far I have to get there and this is what I'm working on each and every week. Some people choose to then continue that map and break it down additionally on how far they're going to go um, and, and break it down to every single day. That just does not work for me but if it's something you would like to do you absolutely can do that by um, merging additional cells. One other thing that might be worthwhile adding is um, your lesson. So um, if you have a textbook that you're going to be using often, it often makes sense for you to map this out based on that. So if you do, then maybe you would write something here like um, 1.1 through 1.4. And here, maybe you skip lesson 1.5 because your students don't need it. And you do 1.6 through 1.9. And, and then you do 1.11 because maybe 1.10 is subtraction and you're deciding not to do it yet. Then 1.10 and then 1.12 through 1.14. Or however your unit is mapped out. So... This gives you a go-to resource to let you know what you're teaching each week. It saves me so much stress, and I hope it helps you. Thanks.